हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू अनदर लेक्चर ऑन क्लासिकल मैकेनिक्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लेग्रेंज इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन सो दिस इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद द लास्ट क्लास वर्क वेयर वी हैव सीन द हैमिल्टन्स प्रिंसिपल सो हैमिल्टन्स प्रिंसिपल इज अ वेरिएशनल प्रिंसिपल दैट्स व्हाट वी हैव सीन इन द लास्ट क्लास वेयर आई हैव यूज्ड द वर्ड कैलकुलस ऑफ वेरिएशन सो टुडे वी विल लुक इनटू लिटिल मोर डिटेल ऑफ what is this calculus of variation and what it can do and then using that principle namely the calculus of variation together with the hamilton's principle we are going to obtain a differential equation and that differential equation is known as the lagrange's equation of motion so calculus of variation will naturally enter into hamilton's principle because if you if you refresh your memory what is the statement of the hamilton's principle it tells you that it is the minimization of or it is the extremization of the phase space trajectory okay subject to the uh, subject to the parametric variations on the generalized coordinates so therefore calculus of variation will naturally enter into the hamilton principle statement but to make it things clear i am explicitly writing the two things one is the calculus of variation the other one is the hamilton's principle so that is if you are going to write down this particular expression hamilton's principle we write like this it is a variation of so that is where the calculus of variation comes into picture variation of the action now in this particular case the action happens to be an integral and therefore it is known as the action integral so we have an integral from t1 to t2 then we have the lagrangian function which is a function of the generalized coordinate generalized velocity and possibly time and then the integration is with respect to time therefore dt and then we say that this is equal to zero why do you want to say this is equal to zero is important the condition of making this equal to zero is to say that the first order derivative of a function being equal to zero in a typical uh, uh, simple calculus you say that dy by dx equal to zero so if this is equal to zero then you say that y can attain a minimum or maximum both both of the possibilities are there you can either have a minimize or you can attain maxima of that particular curve so clearly the first derivative setting equal to zero is the requirement to decide or to further investigate upon the maximum and the minima and that is what is the meaning of this particular equal to zero on the right hand side and the left hand side delta is the representation for the variation we don't want to confuse uh, by using a standard symbol d okay so suppose if i use d of this entire thing it appears as if you are performing a differentiation or uh, it is not the usual differentiation but rather we are performing the parametric variation that means calculus is performed with respect to the parameter so that distinction is there when compared to the standard differentiation standard differentiation you do with respect to the variable you see here this is the standard differentiation in this this x is an independent variable so this is a variable that that's important it's an independent variable but in the calculus but in the case of the calculus of variation the differentiation is not with respect to variable but it is with respect to parameter that is where the difference comes so in order to make that distinction the standard symbol d this we will not use but let us use the symbol delta that is the plan that is why people use delta for the variation rather than using the standard symbol which which means what is the meaning is ultimately what is the meaning of this delta is you are going to perform the the usual differentiation but but there is a point here it is like this you have a function df divided by instead of saying dx now you can use any parameter for example q is a parameter in our problem we don't say it's a variable but we can now consider that as a parameter parameter means the quantity which you are allowing to vary so for example lagrangian is a function of q that's what is written now in that q is allowed to vary therefore we can write like this for example let me give you another example of uh, uh, what what is the meaning of the differentiation with respect to parameter if i say y equal to mx plus c now here you have to understand this is a simple thing that we can understand now this m is the slope that you know and we will be we can now call this as a parameter 
and then x will be the variable so this is the independent of course this is an independent variable but ultimately we will use the word variable here and the c could be another parameter so what i am trying to explain is the distinction between variable and a parameter so the, the question is that what happens if you vary m and z so our, con our conclusion is this this particular equation y equal to mx plus c has the parameters m and c so there are two parameters are there so if there are two parameters are there this board has disappeared so let me bring it back this y the equation for the y has two parameters so we write that there are two of the parameters are there and then this particular equation y has one independent variable so i'll write like this then i say that this is one independent variable so therefore what are the possible derivatives that you can do one is the standard thing which is quite familiar to you which is the dy by dx so this is the standard differentiation you can do with respect to the variable that's clear but what i am telling is using this concept what are the derivatives that you can perform is i can perform dou y by dou m and dou y by dou c these are the two possible derivatives that that can be calculated with respect to the parameters now you see that the with respect to is the parameter m and c so such kind of variations that we are going to do are known as parametric variations and this is what is uh, what we are planning to say that in the calculus of variation in the calculus of variation you will be having this kind of derivative that means derivative is with respect to parameter not with respect to the independent variables that is the point to be noted so coming back to the the, the original hamilton's principle that we have written down here we are going to consider time as an independent variable because time is continuously changing and you are not going to control that only thing is at, at different times you are going to take the measurements we are going to consider q and q dots are the parameters of the phase space so let me write down that q and q dots are the parameters of the phase space when you are performing the calculus of variation we will use that these are the parameters of the phase space if you are not going to discuss anything on the calculus of variation but rather you are going to discuss in general the the curve itself then you can say that they are the phase space variables the, ger the general terminology is phase space variable but now since we are particularly doing the calculus of variation we have to identify which is parameter so so therefore we will identify q and q dots are the parameter because we are planning to vary that vary that means we admit a small uh, variation of q and we admit for a small variation of q dot that is what we mean to say so this is the terminology or these are the concepts that are required and then we can proceed further so what is the calculus of variation will do what kind of job it will do is if you provide the conditions of a physical system in terms of some equation everything has to come in terms of equation because calculus of variation is mathematics so if if you tell some physics problem there is nothing we calculus will not do anything ultimately you have to convert whatever physics that you have you have to convert into a appropriate equation and then you have to identify the parameters in that equation and then you have to provide any restriction is there you have to provide those restrictions if all these things are available then the calculus of variation will perform its work and then it ultimately gives you when minima will uh, will be attained and when maxima will be attained that is what is the ultimately that is if you provide this as an input calculus of variation will give that as an output that as an output means the minima and the maxima what will be minimum and what will be maximum that will be the output from the calculus of variation the input to the calculus of variation would be the the equation and then identify the parameters and then those are the conditions that we will be providing as an input so that's all about the basic introduction to what is the calculus of variation 
now before proceeding further into the the lagrange equation derivation we can see that in real life you can see how the calculus of variation is working so let me show you a photograph now yeah so this is one of the photographs which is uh, quite familiar to you this is uh, almost observed everywhere and you see what is the note that you have to see is that you have the fixed points fixed point is this the small pillar here one pillar here and then the another pillar here so this is the fixed points at which you are going to hang or you are going to put a chain you are not going to put a chain in this particular structure you have a structure like parabolic structure right some kind of a, something looks like a parabola you are not going to hang it like that you are actually going to make it tight like this horizontal so you just follow the cursor here so you will be putting the chain in this particular way so that it is straight like this and then tight it and after you release it and then wait for a considerable amount of time for the equilibrium to take place ultimately what happens is the chain will assume this kind of structure chain will assume assume means chain takes this particular structure okay if you are tightening this probably it may not be hanging this much but but still the structure will be there it may be like this see you have to follow the cursor here see this will be like this but however the ultimate point that i am trying to say is that the chain will not assume straight line straight line will not be possible that is an experimental observation whatever tight you keep on the two ends here ultimately some kind of uh, slightly it will hang down so that a slightly parabolic structure will come anyway this is not parabola so this is just to uh, explain in simple terms we'll see the technical name for this particular structure is known as catenary so it is not the parabola it is known as catenary so let let me uh, let us see that later but before that i will also show another another photograph where a similar observation can be noted yes so this is another another example where you can see the catenary structure catenary structure means wires are hanging in the form of slightly bent okay that structure is known as catenary structure we cannot call it parabolic technically but it looks like that it is not a parabola for parabola you need to have a deep well okay so slightly it is having a curvature and that is known as catenary so the equation for catenary in mathematics is typically hyperbolic cosine if you take hyperbolic cosine function and plot it that will match with this kind of structure so that is why it is known as the catenary structure and the equation for catenary is hyperbolic cosine so you can see that this is observable everywhere in the nature okay and why it happens is there is a quite a lot lot of distances there between this is the point you see follow the cursor here so this is the point where you are having one end point the other end point is still far away that is not visible in this photograph okay so there is a there is a lot of distance between one fixed point and the other point where it is fixed and due to gravity this particular chain or this particular wire assumes this structure and ultimately the physical reason why this is happen is quite simple the reason is that only when the wire attains this particular structure its potential energy happens to be a minimum that's the reason so if you ask the question why this is assuming such a kind of structure the answer have the answer is that only for this kind of a structure the potential energy of the system system means the two fixed points plus the hanging wire or hanging chain whatever it is so that system will attain minimum potential energy only for this configuration so you have to note down the word minimum here so therefore the the job of the minimization is what is done by the calculus of variation and then the calculus of variation gives the output output means equation of the catenary will be the output from the calculus of variation what is the input the input is the mass of the chain the length of the chain the acceleration due to the gravity the distance between the two fixed points okay these are the inputs so if you provide these inputs equation of the catenary will be output so therefore you now can understand what is the calculus of variation is actually doing it will do the minimization job or maximization job ultimately it will give the result that uh, the the nature will is going to obey this kind of rule so that is exactly is the calculus of variation now let us uh, go back to the hamilton's principle and then see how to apply the calculus of variation 
yeah before going directly into this i just want to tell what is the name of this particular uh, problem especially the the derivation of the equation of catenary i said that it's a catenary so let me write down that so catenary will be of the form say some kind of an hyperbolic function okay so that is how the structure will be there for an hyperbolic uh, function and then this particular equation of catenary can be obtained from the calculus of variation so this kind of problem where you you discover the equation of the catenary using the method of calculus of variation is quite popular and anyone who is interested to, to learn the calculus of variation for the first time will be studying this problem and this particular problem has an interesting name and it is known as the Bratschstokron problem so that is what is the name it is a generic name that is given for uh, the standard problem of finding the equation of a catenary uh, due to the due to the mass of the chain under the action of gravity and there are many similar problems are there. this is a variety of problems actually the the variety of problems coming under the Bratschstokron problem will be to find out the uh, the surface area that minimizes certain uh, certain condition and then you can always find out uh, the distance between the two point which has to be uh, the shortest distance distance between two point is fine but you can also go in a roundabout way and reach the destination so mathematically we ask for what kind of path the two points will be the shortest so the answer is that straight line will be the shortest but you'll have to prove that prove that means you have to prove that equation of the straight line is coming out so such problems are known as the Bratschstokron problems they are not difficult of course it's quite simple but if you can refer to that you can easily uh, follow the simple calculus the the standard uh, first order derivative only will be doing only dy by dx only will be calculating and then set that to equal to zero and once you set that equal to zero and simplify you will be getting the ultimate equation it could be equation of straight line or it could be the equation of uh, this particular catenary or cycloid for example equation of cycloid so any one of these equations will emerge as a natural consequence of minimization or maximization so this is the introduction about the Bratschstokron problem which is going to give you a good feeling about the calculus of variation so here i have written in a nutshell what is the purpose of calculus of variation so this particular subject area is used to find the minima and maxima of functionals so that is how the uh, in, in its simplest form we can say like this now here i am giving you this particular statement in order to explain something called a functional here function you know okay functional means once again it's quite simple concept functional means function of a function if f of x is a function which is quite familiar to you then i want to find another function which is a function of f of x so how do you write that so i write like this it is g of f of x okay suppose if you say that f of x is just x square for example and if i say that g of x is equal to i say that cos of f of x like that you can write so that means cosine is one function so this is one function f of x is another function this is known as function of a function so when it when you are entering into function of a function then we call such things as functional there is no necessary that only two of them should be there you can also have another function function of a function of a function for example i can write down that this is h of h of g of f of x so like this you can have anything and there is no more restriction that every of them should be only algebraic you can have a mixture of calculus algebra trigonometry anything can be there for example one of them can be an algebraic one the another one can be a calculus one for example your g of x can represent a function like this integral a to b f of x dx so what is the meaning of this the meaning is g of x is a function that contains integration so when i am going to calculate h of g of x here you see h of g of x that means 
I, I am going to find out the function of the integral of another function. So anything can be there. Such kind of combinations, there is infinitely many combinations are there. But the set of all kind of uh, things that you are going to see, they all will be coming under the heading functional. So functional is there is nothing complicated. Once you know function, then functionals are ultimately it is going to be another function. Remember, uh, if you are going to simplify h of g of f of x, if you simplify that, I will be getting some function. So I will write down g of x, capital G of x. If you simplify, but before you simplify, it appears as a lengthy expression that is known as a functional. So that is the exact thing. Now, if you refresh your memory and write down the Lagrangian, so let us write down this Lagrangian. Lagrangian is a function of q comma q dot comma t. So when you write like this, what happens is this q you are going to perform time derivative. Of course, this is an independent variable. That's fine. But then what happens is you are going to do an integral from t1 to t2. This is what is known as an action and then this is dt. So then what happens here you have to observe the, when you perform the integration with respect to dt out of the three quantities one is the q the first one is q the second one is q dot third one is t which variable will disappear after performing the definite integral this is a definite integral right and we say that this is the action and uh, traditionally in physics action is represented by some capital letter j this is the action integral so when you perform the uh, definite integral which variable will disappear you know that the, the the variable with respect to which the integration is performed that variable will disappear that is a standard rule so which variable is now differentiated it is with respect to t dt is there right therefore that particular variable will disappear which means that the third variable t will disappear after finishing the integration so therefore once you finish the integration that t will disappear once t completely disappears what is left out q1 q comma q dot therefore our conclusion is that this j that you are going to have is actually a function of q and q dot only t will not be there that is that is what is happening whenever you perform definite integrals that particular variable will disappear it's very simple you can verify that easily if i have an x square y for example and if I am going to integrate between 1 to 2 and dx, if I am going to do, what happens? y has nothing to do with x, so y will come out. Then you have an x cube by 3. Then the limits are 1 and 2. So you substitute y into, this fellow is actually 2 cube by 3 minus 1 cube by 3. So finally what happened? In the last expression that you have here, x has disappeared. There is no x here. That's what I mean to say. So the when you perform an integration like this especially definite integral only it's valid only for definite integrals so that particular variable will disappear and this is a function of two variables so this is already a function and that particular function we are going to perform the first derivative for the calculus of variation for calculus of variation what you have to do you have to perform a delta of g that's what i mean to say delta of g means you are going to differentiate so that means I am going to differentiate, so I will put a delta here, so I am going to differentiate. Differentiate what? Differentiating j, but j is an integral. So you are going to differentiate an integral and that integral is a function of q, q dot. You can see function of function entering into picture. Now you must be able to appreciate the where is the function of function coming into picture. So whatever you have written in the Hamilton's principle, namely the action integral is already a function of function that means it is a functional and therefore that is why in the calculus of variation whenever you enter into the calculus of variation most probably we will be having functionals only a simple function generally won't be there if you have a simple function then uh, the standard thing that you learned from the school the standard minimum maxima that is the meaning it's just a function of one variable you find minimum maxima that will not come under calculus of variation so in calculus of variation you are going to have a little bit more complicated expressions which are happens to be the function of functions with more number of parameters okay only one parameter means the problem is always simple generally there will be more number of parameters and sometimes it will be uh, restricted i mean more number of constraints can also be there if constraints are there it is known as constrained optimization if constraints are not there, then it is known as unconstrained optimization. So these are the standard mathematical terminology. 
so i think this much introduction is uh, uh, sufficient so that you feel comfortable when you are going to use the word functional when we are going to use the word calculus of variation so because of these kinds of terminology uh, you should not feel uh, uncomfortable that is the purpose of my explanation and also the standard uh, brach stoke ron problem also you should not feel because of the uh, some kind some kind of uh, term that you have the problem is a fairly simple problems okay Bra the so called brach stoke ron problem is only to find out the uh, condition of uh, or the equation of minimum structure that that will evolve out of some conditions okay so let us now uh, go back to our main topic namely namely the hamilton's principle variation and from there we are going to derive the lagrange equation of motion that's the point so this is our main topic of the today's class namely the uh, derivation of the lagrange equation of motion in principle you can derive this lagrange equation of motion by several methods especially one of the standard method is to use the principle of virtual work given by the de lambert so the principle is known as the de lambert principle of zero virtual work <coughs> that is the name of the principle so by using that you can derive the lagrange equation of motion and the second method of obtaining the same lagrange equation of motion is to use the variational technique on the hamilton's principle variational technique means calculus of variation okay so these are the two methods that you can you can achieve maybe i will write down here uh, if you are not able to remember what i am telling so let me write down that first one is the de lambert's principle de lambert's principle of zero virtual work so this is one of the principles the another one that you are going to use will be the variational technique so these are uh, the the major classification in these one of these two methods you can obtain the same lagrange equation of motion of course the final equation will not change that equation will be the same thing what is known as the lagrange equation of motion and therefore let me put the arrow here starting from this de lambert principle you can obtain the lagrange equation this is one option or starting from the variational technique on the hamilton's principle you can once again get the lagrange equation of motion so the arrow you have to remember how the arrow is there starting point is this and the ending point is the lagrange destination is the lagrange equation of motion so don't put the arrow the other way if you put the arrow the other way it is wrong okay so starting point should be de lambert's principle ending point will be uh, ending point means destination you will ultimately obtain the lagrange equation of motion these are the two methods and today we are going to see the this particular one namely the variational technique on the hamilton's principle so it is also possible to do this if possible we will see in some other class about the de lambert's principle okay so let us now uh, start with this is hamilton's principle let me therefore write down that it is delta of the integral t1 to t2 of the lagrangian l of q comma q dot comma t this is equal to zero so this is how you starting point so the moment you said that we are going to use the hamilton's principle then immediately you have to write down the action integral that is the only thing there in hamilton's principle and then you are you are going to say that you have to extremize it and therefore naturally delta will come equal to zero will come this is the starting point to obtain the equation now before proceeding further there is something which is very important the important thing is about the notation that we are having the even though we have written q here you see that q doesn't have any suffix q1 q2 q3 no suffix are there therefore whenever we are having this kind of a notation q represent the set of all q's this is very important either you have to write it explicitly or you have to make it clear that q is a set of set of all q's if you don't specify either of that that means you don't explicitly tell that this is set of q's you also don't explicitly write q1 q2 and then just just forget about that then it appears as if there is only one q there and only one q dot there okay that is totally wrong you can't have a single q and a single q dot in a dynamical system there will be several q's and several q dots will be there okay so therefore this point should be made clear therefore i'll write down that q means the meaning of q is 
द सेट ऑफ ऑल क्यूज सो क्यू वन क्यू टू क्यू थ्री एक्सेट्रा क्यू एन वेर कैपिटल एन इज द नंबर ऑफ डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम सो हियर यू हैव द कमा सो एल पट कमा हियर एल पट कमा हियर एंड सिमिलरली द क्यू डॉट इज सेट ऑफ ऑल क्यू डॉट्स दैट मीन्स क्यू वन डॉट कमा क्यू टू डॉट एक्सेट्रा द लास्ट वन वुड बी द क्यू एन डॉट एंड द पॉइंट बी नोटेड इज दैट हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ क्यूज आर देर दैट मेनी नंबर ऑफ क्यू डॉट विल बी देर दैट नंबर शुड बी ईक्वल ओके इफ देर आर एन इफ कैपिटल एन नंबर इज देर फॉर द क्यूज सेम कैपिटल एन नंबर शुड बी देर फॉर क्यू डॉट देर फॉर दिस पुट टूगेदर हाउ मेनी वेरिएबल्स आर देर यू हैव एन प्लस एन ओके वी आर नॉट वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट कुड बी एन एन इज जस्ट नंबर इट्स अ नंबर ऑफ डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम विच यू ऑलरेडी नो हाउ टू अपटाइन ओके नंबर ऑफ डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम मीन्स यू स्टार्ट विद द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ कोआर्डिनेट्स पॉसिबल सब्ट्रैक्ट द नंबर ऑफ कंस्ट्रेंट्स दैन यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द नंबर ऑफ डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम दैट इज द कैपिटल एन नाउ यू हैव कैपिटल एन ऑफ द क्यूज एंड अनदर कैपिटल एन ऑफ द क्यू डॉट्स एंड देर फोर यू विल बी हैविंग टू एन ऑफ दम एंड देर फोर दिस टू एन इज एन ईवन नंबर ओके एन कैन बी ऑड नंबर यू कैन हैव सेवन फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन हैव द डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इक्वल टू सेवन दैट्स पॉसिबल बट वंस यू हैव सेवन सेवन क्यूज विल बी देर एंड सेवन क्यू डॉट्स विल बी देर सो टोटली यू विल बी हैविंग फोर्टीन ऑफ दम एंड देर फोर दिस इज ऑलवेज इन ईवन नंबर सो देर फॉर वॉट वी विल से इज दैट द फेस फेस इज देर राइट बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज इन फेस फेस क्यू कम आ क्यू डॉट क्यू कम आ क्यू डॉट मीन्स यू आर गोइंग टू डील विद द फेस स्पेस देर फोर फेस स्पेस इज even dimensional so this is something you have to note down always the face space will be even dimensional you can't have a face space with a 13 uh, 13 coordinates not possible okay so quickly you can reject it so if we, if it is a even number yes it is possible because on the on the x axis you have to plot q and on the y axis you have to plot q dot so always q comma q dot is a pair q comma q dot is a pair that is the reason why this is even dimensional so it's frequently it is known as even dimensional phase space so this is the first point that you have to remember uh, by that i mean to say that l of q1 comma q2 comma q3 etc then comma q1 dot comma q2 dot comma etc then comma t equal to 0 like that you have to write a lengthy expression now the notation that we have written here is comfortable so that you don't have any suffix but still the meaning is retained okay that is the first point that i would like to tell now once you have that now we can uh, perform the differentiation the differentiation rule is quite simple that if you have uh, a function of x comma y then you can quickly calculate do f by do x dx plus do f by do y dy so that would be equal to the df and this is what we are going to call it by the name variation so that's what we are going to do here but you see that this is the variation that you have and then int integration is there now here you see this is the differentiation you have this is the function you have now between the differentiation and function nothing like integral comes so you directly did it but here in between an integration is there so will this integral give you trouble or can you do the can you perform the uh, variation on l that is the question so that has to be clear that point okay if this integral is going to trouble you then you have to first of all complete the integration and simplify and get the expression and after that you have to perform the delta that is the variation so that point i am going to explain now now this delta variation is with respect to so let me write down w r to t w r t means with respect to so with respect to what are you going to perform the variations with respect to q comma q dot so this is very important that is what i have been using the word parametric variation what are the parameters q and q dots are the parameters so with respect to each parameter you have to perform the derivative that means i am going to say if, suppose if i say that this is j if i am going to call by that name then you will have to evaluate do j by do q and you can evaluate do j by do q dot that is the meaning so this is known as the parametric variation you can calculate this and that only these two options nothing else is there time is not a parameter into the system and therefore that is not coming into picture when you are performing the differentiation 
So differentiation part is clear. Coming to the integration, now there is a t1 here. And then the, I have forgot to write a dt. Let me write down dt. So therefore the t1 is there and then differentiation is with respect to t. Therefore dt is there. So integration is with respect to time. Differentiation is with respect to the parameter. This is very important, which means that integration and the differentiation are with respect to completely independent quantities. They are not, I mean, the, the integration with respect to time will not affect Q variables when you are performing the integration. And therefore, it is possible to, it is possible to take this differentiation inside the integration. So therefore, what happens is the above equation can be written like this. I can write down the integral of t1 to t2, integral between these two limits. This delta is taken inside and I write down that this is delta L, where L is, where L is a function of q, q dot and t. And then you have a dt is equal to zero. So you see the important change between the previous expression and this expression that the delta has come inside, which means that you are going to perform the delta operation on the Lagrangian function. That's the meaning. So that is, this is very important because this point is important because the integration is not going to affect the delta operation. Similarly, delta operation is not going to affect the integration. These two things are completely independent of each other. Therefore, you can always interchange the integral and the differentials exchange. I mean, whichever one you do the first doesn't matter. Therefore, the delta comes inside the system. So once this is clear, then only we can do the next step. So therefore, this is equal to, now we can expand this integral t1 to t2. So you are going to apply this kind of, here it is, the formula. This kind of expression you will be using. And therefore, I can write down that this is dou L divided by dou Q. Then you have a delta Q plus dou L divided by dou Q dot. Then you have a delta Q dot. Only two of them. Do you want to write one more term like this? I will write this particular term here or I will, I will write down here and ask the question. Do you want to write dou L by dou T dt? Is this particular last term is there or not? What do you think? Okay, so only if this is clear, then only you will be writing correctly. Otherwise, you will make some mistakes. So now, just now I said that the the calculus of variation or the variation is that we are going to do with respect to the parameters only. Q is a parameter, Q dot is a parameter, T is not a parameter. Therefore, when you are performing the parametric variation, namely the delta operation, the delta operation cannot come here. You see this. So therefore, this particular term cannot come because it is not at all a parameter. Therefore, you should not write this. It is equivalent to saying that I am writing one dou f by dou z into dz. If I write like this, what is the meaning of this? There is no z in the original expression. So you are writing some term which is not at all relevant to the differentiation. Similarly, here time is not at all a parameter. So you should not write this particular last term. Therefore, uh, I have written it so that you will feel that the three terms are there corresponding to the three quantities here. Now you understand that this particular term cannot be there. So I will now remove this. Okay. So you have this two quantities which are entering into picture then you have a dt is equal to 0. And you see the difference between the standard representation. Standard means the one that you learned in mathematics. This is the standard representation. Here you see dx is there. And here you see dy is there. This is the standard representation. And now you see that this is delta is there. Delta symbol is there. Now the reason why we use the delta symbol, just now or a few minutes back I have already explained that the purpose is to make sure that this belongs to the variation and not the differentiation. And where is the differentiation coming into picture is the standard derivative is here. There is one d here, dt, and there is a partial derivative here. So therefore, these kind of derivatives should not be confused with this. Otherwise, what happens is it is it, it appears as if there is a dq 
and then there is a dt so this particular thing will be a dq then this will be a dt then how it how it looks like this you see how it looks like do l by do q will write down this is the first term you see this do l by do q that i am writing here then this delta q suppose if i am going to use a dq symbol then that is what is written then after that this dt is there that's what i am written if you write like this there is a confusion that you have you are going to have some kind of two differential elements are there and when you are putting the integration here what are the limits here or the limits is for q equal to q1 to q2 or t equal to t1 to t2 so isn't it so you are unnecessarily complicating the situation you already know that the integration is with respect to t1 and t2 only but if you are going to put a dq symbol then apparently it means that the integration is with respect to q1 to q2 so that kind of unwanted uh, confusion and other things and will enter into picture and therefore it is a general practice to use the symbol delta for the variation that is the reason why we use delta symbol so now we can simplify this so let us uh, rewrite this as two of the integrals because you can see that the two terms are there so let me write down integral t1 to t2 do l divided by do q delta q then you have a multiplied by dt that would be the first integral plus the second integral will be t1 to t2 you have do l by do q dot then you have delta q dot so let me write the, let me do one small change here what is this delta q dot we have to understand what it is delta q dot is nothing but delta of q dot is dq by dt that's clear right q dot is dq by dt now again you have to come back to the old uh, old story that i told you that delta is the operator with respect to parameters d by dt is an operator with respect to time you see here d by dt is there d by dt is with respect to time only that is it will affect time whereas delta will affect parameters so these two things are independent operators one will not disturb the other and therefore the order of operation is not important you can first perform delta then perform d by dt or you can first perform d by dt then perform delta the order of operation will not affect the uh, original expression because they are independent of each other and therefore what happens is i will first do the d by dt operator so i'll write down the d by dt and later i will do the delta so i'll put this delta here these two things are equivalent or equal okay so you you can see the order has been changed delta operator has come inside d by dt operator has come outside it is it is the identically same explanation that i gave uh, one minute back here in the case of the integration here you see this this particular thing so this particular delta has crossed this integration and went inside and the integration has come outside that means the integration and the delta has been interchanged the order has been interchanged and the same thing is exactly what we are doing now because these two things are independent of each other this is very important now that is what we are going to write down here into this do l by do q dot into instead of writing delta q dot let us write down this one so i'll write down this it is d by dt of delta q that is over then into the last dt is there so that particular dt is equal to 0 okay so you have two two integrals are there so let us simplify this two integrals and then make the conclusion so the first integral there is nothing to do so uh, probably i will simply put a bracket here and this entire thing you copy first integral there is nothing to do then plus the second integral we will make an adjustment so what is happening you see that this particular dt this dt will be getting cancelled with this dt okay so once that is cancelled you will be having the integral t1 to t2 you have do l by do q dot so once you cancel this what is left out is only delta q so i'll write down that this is delta q but there is one more thing it is d of that is very important it is d of delta q 
and that's all the dt dt is can cancelling with this dt and this dt is cancelling then i'll be getting equal to zero and this first one you simply copy this entire thing you are going to simply bring it down here that's all so now i have written in this particular format so that now it is much more comfortable to identify uh, something which is familiar to you namely the udv formula so you, you can now consider this quantity as some u here u and this particular quantity can be v so udv formula can be applied that is the reason why we have done this kind of adjustment so if you are going to do that let us write down that this first term is same integral t1 to t2 then you have a do l by do q then you have a delta q after that you have a dt plus the first term will be uv so what is uv do l by do q dot multiplied by delta q evaluated between t1 and t2 uv the formula is uv minus integral vdu okay uv minus integral vdu that's what we are planning to do so therefore you get a minus integral t1 to t2 vdu v is what delta q then you have du so d remember d is time derivative this is important otherwise you don't know where from this d by dt came so this d in our in our problem is a time derivative therefore we are writing d by dt so d by dt of u u is do l by do q dot and that's all so this entire thing entire thing from the beginning to this will be equal to zero and that's all so now we'll have to simplify this so i don't have space probably i'll move further here so once we have this particular term the first term there is nothing to do anything and then the second term is the important term that we can simplify so this is important how are you going to simplify this is let me simplify only the second term and then we will simply copy the first and the last term so this this particular middle term how are you going to simplify is it is do l divided by do q dot evaluated at t2 multiplied by delta q evaluated at t2 minus do l by do q dot evaluated at t1 multiplied by delta q evaluated at t1 so that is what is the expression because t2 and t1 are the limits of this so you will have to evaluate first at t2 then minus evaluated t1 so interestingly what happens is this quantity namely the delta q at t2 and the delta q at t1 these two quantities go to zero now how it is going to zero for that you have to remember the the previous class explanation and for that and for that reason i will also explain now how it is going to zero let me let me make that particular point clear how it becomes zero so in the phase space what happens is you you have drawn uh, a diagram similar to this i will not repeat the same diagram that i have drawn in the last class but instead i will draw a similar diagram that the phase space is the one where you have the q axis is this one and the q dot axis will be that and in that you are going to have some trajectory the trajectory can be a circular path elliptical path any kind of arbitrary path that is possible in the case of the double pendulum example in the last class we have seen that you get a complicated structure so anything can come so what we will do is therefore starting from a particular point a particular point means at a particular time starting from a particular point or time the dynamical system evolves along some path it is going to evolve along some path that is this is by naturally this is what ultimately a dynamical system is going to follow but however i do not know that the system is going to follow like this and therefore what i am saying is that mathematically we will arbitrarily start with some other path something like this for example something like this we can say 
so the yellow color line or the yellow color trajectory is what is the equation that we are starting with because we do not know what is the nature is going to follow but however the white color trajectory is the path taken naturally by the dynamical system so now the job of the calculus of variation what is the job of the calculus of variation is if this is the starting point for you if this is how you start with then slowly the yellow color line has to come and merge with white color line that's all that is called variation variation means what is happening so let me show in a different color so variation means slowly it will come here and then slowly it may go like that so you can see the first pink color line the second pink color line these are the variations now you can see what is the variation so you see that that is your variation in the q dot so this is the q dot i can put delta so delta q dot means because why this is the q dot in the vertical direction that is why i am putting q dot if it is horizontal let us say this is horizontal from here to here if you are going to move like this that is in horizontal so this is our horizontal is q and therefore the horizontal thing will be a delta q so you understand now what is the meaning of delta q and delta q dot so by varying q's and q dots what happens is the yellow color trajectory line can become a pink color trajectory line and once again this pink color trajectory line can again move on to this new pink color trajectory and ultimately this again will be Uh, coming to the white color line and once it comes to the white color line what happens is this delta q goes to zero delta q with zero means what there is no more variations are required okay when no more variations are there you you should remember what is the connection to zero here so let me go back here you see here this is zero so when you are performing the calculus of variation then those differences variation means what differences those differences should go to zero if you are unable to perform any more differences that means you reach the destination okay you you how it is very simple you move little bit forward and see whether your house is not there if your house is not there again you little bit move okay little bit you are moving means that one step you are moving forward is your delta q like that you keep on moving delta q delta q delta q and once you reach your house and that's it you are going to sit you are not going to move which means that delta q is zero so the concept is like that so delta q is variation you keep varying keep varying until it goes to zero if it didn't come to zero you keep varying so it is not a simple process the optimization process is a little lengthy process and if you are going to perform this on a computer remember that the optimization problems are the are quite computationally intensive work okay you can't find out when when delta q will go to zero so you'll have to repeat so many times uh, with all possible values of the delta q's and delta q dots and then when you discover that delta q is going to zero then you then you finalize that okay that is the destination destination means in in physics that is the trajectory followed by nature okay that means the natural dynamical system will evolve according to that particular trajectory that is the meaning of that now once this is clear you understand what is the meaning of delta q zero now now you ask the question did you understand this zero here which i have explained here this particular thing so what is the meaning of this particular statement is delta q at t2 let me write down here delta q at t2 that is evaluated at t2 so where is t1 and t2 first of all so this is your delta this is your delta q evaluated at t1 so where is t1 t2 this is your time t1 so you have an you 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 are your dynamical system is uh, evolving and you are going to choose two of the times okay two of the times you are arbitrarily you can choose it need not be starting point it need not be ending point you can choose any two time in between so let the first time that you are going to choose will be t1 and the the next time or the a later time could be t2 so i will now represent t1 and t2 so now it is clear in the diagram where is t1 and where is t2 so now you ask the question look at the diagram and ask the question at the point t1 and at the point t2 where i have put a dot here you see this there is a dot here do you have any variation in yellow color 
trajectory pink color trajectory and white color trajectory at the point t2 see there this is the point t2 at the point t2 yellow color trajectory and pink color trajectory white color trajectory they are all coming to a same point therefore there is no variation that is what we mean to say that this is zero there is no variation at the end points t1 and t2 because the end points t t1 and t2 are the fixed place where we are going to start and therefore t1 and t2 are fixed points okay that is the place where we are going to uh, start the study of the evolution of trajectory and therefore all the trajectories will be starting there and all the trajectories will be ending there and therefore variations are zero there and therefore this particular term goes to zero and finally what happens is because of that the integral becomes simple now so you see that this particular integration you have first this is the first term this is the second term this square bracket term is the second term and then here you have a third term out of the three terms the middle term has gone to zero completely zero because this is zero this is also zero so what is therefore left out is what we are going to write down so let me erase this portion either i have to erase or if you can remember this we can write down in the next line okay so maybe i'll i'll come down here so i have erased the the other unwanted things and uh, the 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 equation where we are going to simplify the t1 t2 limits i am keeping this so now you can understand that this particular uh, term goes to zero so let me write down like this so that now the board will look clear and we have the remaining uh, two terms are there now in the remaining two terms something is common now what is common you see this dq that i mean delta q this delta q is common here so therefore i'll take common here so integral t1 to t2 then you have a delta q if i take this delta q common what is left out is do l divided by do q then you have a minus then you have a d by dt of do l by do q dot and then of course uh, i think this dt is not there you'll write down and then so that the integration is with respect to time that is equal to zero so that is what we have and now almost 99 percent of the job is over now we'll have to understand this particular equation in order to make a conclusion so this equation is valid for each and every q's so you should remember that this is not a single integral once again that is where the place that you have to be careful just because q is there it doesn't mean that this is one integral q means q1 q2 q3 etc up to qn similarly this q dot means q1 dot q2 dot etc which means that how many integrations are there for one q1 and q q1 dot you have one integration the second integration third integration up to n number of integrations are there because q is actually set of all q1 q2 etc so because of that reason uh, so because of that reason you can now imagine that this is not a single integral it is n number of integrations which are added up so that is the meaning for each one of this q this has to be done that is why it is added up so that is the point that goes behind the scenes if you if you don't uh, want to make that kind of statement then you will have to write explicitly all the terms so that is you have to repeat the same integration by putting a suffix here q1 q2 q3 etc and then plus 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 so this is a shorthand or co or compact representation so we, you don't have to write a very big expression and still you understand what is going on so this is a compact representation without using the suffixes if you are using suffixes you have to do the addition and uh, which means that you have to if you don't want to write many terms at least you have to write down like this summation and then say i equal to 1 to n then you have to write down delta q i that is what is this this delta q this delta q i am going to write delta q i then into the remaining things you have to write so now i am i am explaining that this is not a single term this is sum of uh, n number of degrees of freedom so that point should be always clear that is why in the beginning itself i explained that q means set of all q's okay once that is clear now we are going to make the important conclusion that if this is this is clear then our conclusion is this okay so we we conclude that 
Now that means this particular expression that the integral of this is equal to zero. If it is so, if it is so, then we can make the conclusion that the quantity inside this bracket is zero. That is, what is the quantity inside the brace? Do L by do Q minus d by dt of do L by do Q dot. That's all. So that is equal to zero. That is the conclusion, and where we can write down. Once again, for clarity, that where q is this q1 comma etc qn and q dots are q1 dots comma comma qn. So, though it looks quite simple, this is very important because ultimately it is going to tell you how many differential equations are there. Okay, uh, because the appearance of the equation is same, and we write only one of them without the suffix. So this is our conclusion, and the equation that we have obtained like this, and this is known as the the Lagrange equation. So this is the important equation, namely the Euler-Lagrange equation. So this is our conclusion. So, uh, what is that we have done in today's classes? You have started with the Hamilton's principle, and then you are using the variational techniques, which means that you are going to use the calculus of variation. And since the action integral itself is a functional, so naturally the calculus of variation is uh, is applicable. And then the variation has to be performed on the parameters. And the parameters we are fixing are q and q dot. Time is not the parameter. Okay, that is very important. And once you have that, uh, we have used the integration by parts for the uh, simplification of the integration. And there, one important point is there that at the end points you have taken that delta q is zero. And here, there is one more Im very important point is there while making this conclusion that I will explain now. Uh, there is something which is much more important is that about the delta q here. So I will explain now what is the importance of this delta q in this expression to make the conclusion. In fact, when I am saying that I have, we are making a conclusion, immediately you should have got the doubt how can we make this conclusion. Because there is an integral here. So this integral has disappeared in our conclusion. You see, we have we are making a conclusion that this is equal to zero. What happened to this integral? Uh, how to do the integration? So those questions are those doubts you must have got. Okay. If you have not got the doubt, I will now explain how this conclusion is made and what happened to this integral. So let me give that explanation to you now. But before uh, before moving this particular board, you should see the appearance of this. Uh, because I am going to write down similar thing like that. There is an integral. Remember the appearance. Okay, appearance is enough. There is an integral, and then there is one function. Delta q is one function. Then inside this curly brace, there is another function. That's all. Then this is a, a dx or d whatever it is. So there are two functions are there. Let us say that this is uh, some f of x, and this fellow is some g of x. Okay. Once you understand that there is f of x there, then g of x is there, and zero is there. So this particular information you note down so that I will go to a different place in the board and then explain on what basis we have made that conclusion. So we have something like this in our integration. There is an f of x and then there was a g of x. This f of x is your, uh, your delta x. If you have written in your notes, you verify. This is your delta of uh, that q and this fellow is the quantity inside the curly brace. Then you have a dx. Then you have an integral between the limits x1 and x2. Since it is a t1 and t2, that was a dt. Now, this integral looks like this. Now, the conclusion is based on this particular theorem. So, what is the theorem? Let us see. Okay. So, this particular theorem, let me write down here. Yeah. So, we are, we are going to discuss about this. There is a theorem, what is known as the fundamental lemma on the calculus of variation. Essentially, it is a theorem on uh, a simple calculus okay it is not a theorem on calculus of variation it is actually the theorem on definite integrals only but however 
Interestingly, what happens is this particular theorem is very, very useful in the theory of calculus of variation. So that is why it has been uh, termed as fundamental lemma on the calculus of variation. Lemma means uh, a small result. When you are doing some big calculation and a big proof, a small result emerges out, right? Sometimes it will emerge. Like in, uh, suppose in the chemical reaction, for example, if you are synthesizing some chemical, some byproducts may come. No, you can't say I don't want, right? Some byproducts will come when you are when you are synthesizing some chemical. Similarly, when you are when you are trying to do some proof, uh, some other small information will come out as an additional result. Such informations are known as lemma. Okay, they are something like you know uh, a small result that is naturally coming out, and uh, and it is very useful even though it is a small result. This is very useful, especially in the calculus of variation. That is why uh, this has been. Uh, given this kind of a name and ultimately the result is quite simple let us see like, i will tell you what is the statement of the this particular lemma now the statement is this if if an integral looking like this is equal to zero okay and if f of x that is what you are going to consider if you are going to have an f of x could be any function is arbitrary function Arbitrary function means it can be any function. There is nothing special that it has to be like this, it has to be like that. No such conditions, okay. It could be any function, but there is one, only one condition, namely, it's an arbitrary function with, with the property that f of x2 should be equal to 0 and f of x1 is equal to 0. So, at both the end points, it should be equal to 0. Okay, then, then, then we can say that g of x equal to 0. That's all. This is the statement. So again you read this. Suppose if you have a definite integral that looks like this where f of x and g of x are two functions. In these two functions, one of the functions f of x can be arbitrary. We have freedom of choosing anything. But there is only one condition namely that the end points, end point means at the limit points, the function value should go to 0. If it is so, then we can make a conclusion. Okay, then we can make a conclusion that g of x is zero. Okay, in the interval. Of course, this uh, in the interval, all those details are not so important. But let me write down in the interval. X one comma x two because x one comma x two is the limit we are discussing, right? That is why the interval. This is between the limits x one and x two. Outside the limit, we are not at all interested. So that is why we are not uh, not so much important to write that. So the conclusion is this is the important conclusion this is the theorem says that g of x can be proved to be how can you say right zero means proof is there that is called lemma so a small proof is available not difficult quite simple and you can always prove that g of x goes to zero so this is the this is the lemma that that is being used in order to make our conclusion what is the conclusion now you see so this is your f of x you follow the white color cursor. This is your f of x. This entire thing in the curly brace is your g of x. So this f of x is arbitrary. So you can have arbitrary variation. Any variation that you can make subject to the condition that the variations are zero at the boundaries. Because you have seen that when a curve is going like this and if another curve is going like that, at the boundary points, these are the boundary points, your variations are zero because both of them are touching at the same point. So no variation. So the, all these conditions are satisfied. So when the conditions are satisfied like that, the conclusion is g of x equal to 0. That means the quantity inside the curly brace is equal to 0. That means our point to be noted is that we don't have to perform an integration. That is the point to be noted. We have not done any integration here. You have, that is the interesting point that you have to note down. Okay. So this theorem says that if, this, if such a definite integral exists, then our conclusion is g of x equal to 0. So we are there is nothing to do with the integration, simplifying the integration, nothing is required. So this is the important conclusion and that conclusion which you have here is known as the Euler-Lagrange equation. And this is valid for every degrees of freedom and therefore I have written it explicitly. Okay. So, so that is the 
uh, standard way to obtain the Euler Lagrange equation, which is uh, one of the very important equations, uh, which is the central theme of the classical mechanics, by the way. And any mechanics that you are going to do using this particular equation is known as the Lagrangian dynamics. So this is the main point. Lagrangian dynamics means you are going to use this as the equation of motion and then solve the problem. You are not going to use Newton's equation at all. Okay. Newton's equations or Newton's laws are not being used now. You are going to use this as the equation and then you can solve any dynamical problem. So we will see some of the examples uh, how to deal with this. And in particular, we need to explain what is the L that you have written. L is known as the Lagrangian function. And how to choose the Lagrangian function, that we will see in the next class.